Hello, my name is Brother Sean. To his friends, the Barefoot Franciscan Monk or Father Ted. And I'm a member of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, an online cyber community of men and women of different faith beliefs and none who live the monastic life from their own home, their monastery without walls. So that's about me. This short video again is from my heart and it came to me yesterday afternoon when I was out walking the dogs in our nearby woodland and interestingly it was based on a discussion I had with my own spiritual director about eight years ago. She's an enclosed poor Claire nun, quite a vibrant, beautiful, jolly elderly lady but by golly she could always hit the nail on the head. And she reminded me about the spiritual life, in particular, oneself on the spiritual path to that of an onion. So I would like to share with you a little of that discourse that we had, and it may help you and it may not. It is my belief that now that we are in 2013, the Aquarian Age, the dawn of Aquarius, Christ Consciousness. And Christ Consciousness means heart consciousness, not head consciousness. Prior to 2000, prior to December 2012, we always came to the head to cipher truth, to try and understand and discern what the Supreme was saying to our hearts. But Christ consciousness is about coming from the heart. Allow me to read this to you. It's from the Celtic Treasure, Daily Scripture and Prayer for the Soul on the Journey. Happy are you who meditate on wisdom, who reflect in your heart on her ways and ponder her secrets, who listen for life, who listen for her on life's pathways, and look for her at every turn. She will come to meet you like a mother, and like a young lover she will welcome you. So listen to the counsel of your own heart, and above all pray to the Most High the Supreme, that you may be guided in the way of truth, for it is God the Supreme who created humankind in the beginning and gave us the power to choose freely. It is God who wove into our hearts the voice of truth and invites us to act faithfully. Life and death stand before us at each moment and whichever one we choose will be given. Happy are those whose hearts do not condemn them and who have not given up hope. God searches the depths of the human spirit and understands our innermost secrets. Those who love wisdom love life, and whoever seeks her from early morning will be blessed. That was taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapters 14 and 15 from the Old Testament Bible. So coming back to the analogy of the onion, well, if you are good in the kitchen and handy with preparing meals. And I so love preparing food, simple food, for our community and when our friends come and join us for our monthly gatherings. But if I have to use any onions, I try to avoid the English onion because they spit their enzyme. And when it gets to the eyes, you start crying. Oh yes, and that makes it difficult when you're cutting objects with a sharp knife. 
So I've always opted for the Spanish onion. They're bigger, they're not as tasteless, but they don't spit their enzymes, so one rarely cries. My spiritual director reminded me that the Father Mother God sees us as an onion. He doesn't take a sharp knife and go right through us, cutting us into two pieces. The mind does that. My mind certainly has over the years because my mind ruled my life and often I was not in a good place and my relationship was God, with God was strained because as a young Catholic nursing monk in the 60s, our training was very different to the training of today. In those days, it was very much based on the 14th century rule of life. Do as you're told, shut up and get on with it. Whereas today there's discussion, but yet I'm aware that there's still that pull of authority on men and women who've embraced the monastic life. And that has created a sense of fear where they're afraid to speak their truth from love. The Father Mother God does not use a sharp instrument to break us into pieces. What I have found since my illness 16 years ago when I became mentally ill to the impact or side effects of Prozac, where I lost everything, but yet I was given the greatest gift to come back to my heart. And now I'm aware that in my search for God, various habit forming patterns manifest themselves in prayer. So I call on God for guidance and strength. And what God actually does, he gives us the power to use a sharp knife to just pierce the first layer of the onion and remove the outer shell, which is tough. That's why so many of us have a brick wall around our heart. We're afraid of being hurt. I've met many clients and many friends who, when they've lost their favorite pet, they will not entertain another because the wounding was too great. The loss was too painful. And it's the same with those who've been in love and happily married and suddenly one of them is found out to be cheating on the other, leaving the survivor devastated and carrying a lot of unnecessary hurt. But what God does, he empowers the heart to take one layer off at a time, to face our demons and our shadows and not to struggle with them by coming to it from the mind and using the neuro-linguistic program route. He invites us to discern what are the blocks in my life. And when we discover those blocks, we come to God in prayer and we name them, we bless them, and we release them to God. And that leaves some free space to carry on in the journey. And then when we come to the next problem, we name it, we bless it, we release it. So as we make our way down to the central core of the onion, the Father Mother God will only empower us to remove one layer at a time. And it won't be rushed, it won't be yesterday. It will be done slowly, gradually and lovingly. There will be sensitivity there to allow us time to self-heal from the removal of the previous layer. And you know what's so beautiful? There's no agenda by God to control us. None whatsoever. Because you and I, when we were born, we were given free will. And that gift allows us to choose whether to remove each layer, each obstacle, each problem from our life by naming it, blessing it and releasing it. 
or to just carry on totally oblivious like the ostrich with his head in the sand. If you are on a spiritual journey, that's amazing. But remember, we are human. We do fall down. I fall down regularly. And the hardest part of it is getting back up again. But my role model as a Catholic Christian who embraces all faiths is the prophet Jesus, the barefoot Galilean. If you know the story of Easter, Good Friday and Easter, you'll know that he fell three times on his way to Calvary. And he got up each time, but the third time he was so exhausted that someone from the audience came to help him. He was called Simon of Cyrene. And that Simon represents you and me. Because each time when we get up and ask God for help, we're actually easing the burden that you and I inflicted on the Christ by our stubbornness of heart. So the onion may not be the ideal example for you, but it's one that works for me. It's simple. It's easy to comprehend and having and, and cooking for the community. I know from experience that the English onion is not the onion for me. It's the Spanish onion because there's no real discomfort where I can't see what I'm doing. But with the Spanish onion, the bigger onion, you can see the layers that have been cut away. And you know that you're given time to self-heal before the next exercise of removing the next layer. There are about maybe 10 to 12 layers, but it doesn't matter because each step of the way, the Father, Mother, God with the company of heaven are there with you. And all you and I have to do is to ask. And the reason why I guess so many are stuck in their mind, stuck in anger, in bitterness, which becomes a cancerous cell that corrodes the mind, body and spirit, is because they're fearful of surrendering their heart. There's an innate resentment of listening to their heart. Maybe they don't know how to. But I'm here to help you. I'm not here to say to you it's easy. The spiritual path is not easy. It's a challenge. But are you up to the challenge? Or are you a fair weather friend of God that you give up at the first hurdle because you're not feeling well? Because your emotions are running riot in your life. It takes tenacity it takes guts, it takes real courage to face your greatest fears. But when you do, you do it not alone. You are supported every step of the way. I hope my dialoguing has helped you. And maybe you'll come and join me one night at midnight when we have a spiritual soiree where we spend time in reflection, concluding with a guided meditation, connecting with the Cosmic Christ and Magdalena, the diaphragmatic energies of the Cosmic Christ and Miriam Magdalena. I wish you a peaceful day. I wish you a blessed day. And I thank you for giving up your time to watch this old monk share with you from the heart. Namaste. Shalom inshallah. Accept bonum. Om shanti. Solo de caritas. Salakum Peace. And remember, you are not alone.